let us discuss uh, some more uh, properties of linear transformations. Uh, the first uh, important result for linear transformations whose uh, domain is a finite dimensional vector space is called uh, the rank nullity dimension theorem. So let me prove that first. The rank nullity dimension theorem. Okay, first, uh, what is a rank? What is nullity? Let uh, T be a linear transformation from V into W. I will assume that uh, V finite dimensional. the rank of t is uh, the dimension of the range of t of the range space of t let's use uh, r for this then uh, almost like gamma this is dimension of range of t that is a rank the nullity of t let us uh, denote it uh, by uh, eta is the dimension of the null space of T. That is, let us say eta is uh, dimension of N of T. Okay. So I define these two numbers non negative integers <laughs> gamma and eta are non negative integers dimension of the range space of t is the rank dimension of the null space of t is the nullity okay so these are the numbers there is a dimension of uh, the domain space v i have assumed v to be finite dimensional so this theorem relates uh, these three numbers the rank nullity dimension theorem i'll call it rnd theorem V is finite dimensional. And T be a linear map from V into W, no conditions on W, which means W could be infinite dimensional, but V is finite dimensional, T is linear. Okay. Then this uh, theorem says that rank plus nullity equals dimension of the domain space. Rank plus nullity equals dimension of the domain space. Okay. Now you see that uh, a dimension of W does not come into this equation. That is the reason why there is no condition on W. W could be infinite dimension. Okay. So let us prove this and then look at some of the consequences of this result. So let me first discuss the proof. I want to make use of the fact that any linearly independent subset of the vector space V can be extended to a basis of V. Okay. So let me start with the null space of T. What I know is that null space of T being a subset of V must be finite dimensional. Null space of T is finite dimensional. So I will take a basis consisting of finitely many elements. Let us call uh, 
u1 u2 etc u gamma uh, eta let uh, u1 u2 etc u eta be a basis of uh, null space of t I know that null space of t is uh, gamma dimension uh, eta dimension so there are uh, eta vectors here this is a basis of null space of t this uh, is linearly independent this can be extended to a basis of uh, v extend uh, this to a basis uh, of v that is I will have u1 u2 etc u eta then uh, let me call the other vectors v1 v2 etc v l this is uh, a basis of v and so what this means is that dimension of v must be eta plus l okay dimension of v is eta plus l where eta is a dimension of the null space of t that is a nullity so we need to only show that l is equal to rank of t we need to only show that l is equal to rank of t okay so the claim is is that clear so dimension of v is uh, eta plus l because of uh, this being a basis there are eta plus l vectors eta we started with this is a basis for null space of t so eta is uh, the nullity of t we need to only show that uh, l is equal to rank of t that is gamma dimension of the range space of t so we'll exhibit uh, we must exhibit a basis of uh, range of t consisting of precisely l vectors okay it's uh, it's probably not uh, unnatural to take these vectors take all these vectors look at the action of these vectors under uh, t the action of uh, t on these vectors will give you zero because they are in null space look at these other vectors and probably they should be a basis in fact what we will show is that you look at tv1 tv2 etc tvl we will show that uh, this is uh, a basis of range of t okay suppose we show that this is a basis of range of t then it follows that uh, there are l vectors here then it follows that rank of t is l and so this equation holds okay so that's what we'll do we'll show that these uh, uh, vectors are linear independent and they span range of t let's first dispose of uh, the spanning thing you must show that this is a basis so we must show that it's uh, linearly independent and a spanning set so let's take uh, y in range of t and then uh, show that y is a linear combination of these vectors okay okay y is in range of t by definition then there exists uh, x in v such that uh, y is uh, equal to tx there x x in v now this is a basis for v and so i can write this y as uh, t of x that is t of this is this x is in v it's a linear combination of these vectors so i have something like alpha 1 u1 plus alpha 2 u2 etc plus uh, alpha eta u eta plus let's say beta 1 v1 plus beta 2 v2 plus etc plus beta l v l that's my x linear combination of these vectors this is a basis t is linear so this can be rewritten as uh, alpha 1 t of uh, u1 plus alpha 2 t u2 etc alpha eta t of u eta plus beta 1 t v1 etc beta l t v l okay but observe that um, u1 u2 etc u eta they are uh, in null space of t they are in fact linearly independent they are in null space of t so these terms are zero and so this is just beta 1 t of v1 
etc. Beta L T V L that is this belongs to span of the vectors T V 1, T V 2 etc. T V L linear combination of these vectors because these are 0. And so for one thing uh, this is a spanning set T V 1, T V 2 T V L is a spanning set it spans range of T. Next linear independence. So let us consider a linear let us consider a linear combination of uh, T V 1, T V 2 etc. T V L equate that to 0 show that each coefficient is 0. So let us consider um, what shall I say delta 1 T V 1 plus delta 2 T V 2 plus etc plus delta L T V L suppose this is 0 I must show that each of the scalars is 0. This uh, use the fact uh, T is linear so this means T of delta 1 V 1 etc delta L V L is 0. This means uh, this vector delta 1 V 1 etc delta L V L that belongs to a null space of T. that belongs to a null space of T, null space of T is spanned by U1, U2 etc and so that is a linear combination of T of this vector is 0, null space of x belongs to null space of t if t of x is 0. So this vector must be in the null space of t that is what I have written down null space of t has u1 u etc u eta as a basis so let me just go to that line. So delta 1 v1 plus delta 2 v2 plus etc plus delta l v l must be a linear combination of u1 u2 etc u eta because null space of t is uh, uh, spanned by these vectors. So let us say I have beta 1 u1 plus beta 2 u2 etc uh, beta eta u eta is that okay bring this to the left hand side that is delta 1 v1 etc plus delta l v l minus beta 1 u1 plus etc beta eta v u eta this is 0 but u1 u2 etc u eta v1 v2 etc v l they are linearly independent so this means each of these scalars delta 1 etc equals delta L is 0, beta 1 etc beta eta is 0. Go back uh, and see what you have here delta L delta 1 etc delta L they are 0 so this is a 0 vector I am sorry you, you have the proof right away delta 1 etc delta L equal to 0 I started with this combination. I started with delta 1 T V 1 plus delta 2 T V 2 etc delta L T V L equal to 0 I have shown that the scalars are 0 so T V 1 T V 2 etc they are linearly independent. So T V 1 etc T V L this is a linearly independent subset hence the theorem. Our claim is that uh, L is a dimension of range of T. First we have shown uh, that these vectors T V 1, T V 2 etc they uh, form a spanning set then we have shown that they are linearly independent that is rank nullity dimension theorem okay. Let us look at some consequences one of the consequences of the rank nullity dimension theorem is the following I will state this as uh, first corollary V is finite dimensional. In fact, uh, 
will take this time dimension w equals dimension v t from v to w is linear then we have the following p is uh, injective if and only if t is subjective the dimensions of uh, the domain and the codomain vector spaces are the same then a linear map is injective if and only if it is surjective that is now you go back to the last example of uh, the last lecture the last example of the last lecture t of uh, t from r2 to r2 t of x equals x1 plus x2 comma x1 minus x2 we verified that it is 1 to 1 as well as on to if we had uh, known this theorem it would have been enough to verify only one of those dimension of codomain and the dimension of the domain there are the same so it's enough if you verify one of those okay how do we uh, prove this this is a consequence of the rank nullity dimension theorem rank of t plus nullity of t is the dimension of the domain space which is also the dimension of the codomain space okay suppose t is injective we had shown last time that uh, null space of t is singleton 0 in fact they are equivalent t is injective if and only if null space of t is singleton 0 null space of t is singleton 0 if and only if nullity of t is 0 because uh, we had defined the dimension of the 0 space to be 0. So null, uh, null space of t is singleton 0 if and only if nullity that is eta is 0. Eta is 0 if and only if gamma is dimension w. Gamma is dimension w but what is gamma? Gamma is a dimension of the range of t that is this happens if and only if dimension range of t is dimension w range of t is a subspace of w if it has the same dimension as w then it must be equal to w so this happens if and only if range of t equals w this is the same as saying that t is surjective okay So t is injective if and only if t is surjective. Okay, this is one of the consequences. Suppose I have uh, a relation. See dimension v dimension. Look at the finite dimensional case when both v and w are finite dimensional. These two are uh, integers. One can compare uh, these two integers. I'll state this then as uh, the next corollary. Again, uh, v and w are finite dimensional this time I'll assume dimension v to be n dimension w to be m t from v into w is linear then we have the following if n is greater than m see the equality case has been discussed earlier let us discuss the case when one of them is greater than the other each is greater than the other in two cases n greater than m is one case m greater than n is the other case if n is greater than m then the conclusion is uh, t is uh, not injective if n is greater than m then t cannot be injective if uh, m is greater than n then t cannot be surjective okay that will completely exhaust uh, the three cases when uh, v and w are both finite dimensional okay proof by contradiction okay if t is injective 
first part if t is injective then we know that null space of t is single term 0 and so nullity is 0 and so rank plus nullity dimension theorem rank plus nullity equals dimension that theorem says that uh, rank is equal to dimension of W that is dimension V which is N dimension V is N but uh, gamma is uh, dimension of the range space so what this means is that range space of T dimension of the range space of T is uh, equal to N but then uh, range space is a subspace of W so this N cannot exceed M since range of T is uh, a subspace of uh, W and dimension W is M this N cannot exceed uh, M M is a dimension of W M is a dimension of W N is a dimension of V first we have used dimension V is N so gamma is N gamma is the dimension of the range space range space being a subspace of a finite dimensional vector space cannot exceed the dimension of that subspace so this N cannot exceed M so that is a contradiction that is if T is injective then N is less than or equal to M means if N is strictly greater than M then T cannot be injective that is the first statement the second one is similar I am going to leave that as an exercise second part is similar second part is similar again proof by contradiction okay so these are two important consequences of the fundamental result on the dimensions of the subspaces null space and the range space of a finite dimensional vector space let us uh, uh, look at uh, linear transformations that are both injective and surjective a little closer if a linear if a function is uh, injective and surjective then it is invertible if a function is both 1 1 and on 2 then it is bijective it is uh, invertible and the inverse function is also 1 1 and on 2 okay if f is bijective then f inverse exists and f inverse is bijective okay the question that we would like to ask here is t is injective and surjective linear then I know t inverse is injective and surjective question is is t inverse linear the answer is yes so let us let us first prove that let us first prove that the inverse of a linear transformation is also a linear transformation and then look at some consequences for uh, vector spaces if there exists an invertible linear transformation between them so let me first prove this result I will state this as a lemma let uh, t from v into w be linear uh, and uh, bijective by which I mean injective and subjective 1 to 1 and on, and on to then uh, we know that t inverse exists as a function and uh, we know that t inverse must be a function from w to uh, v the claim is that this is linear t inverse is linear so let us first prove this and then look at uh, some of the consequences of this result okay I want to show t is uh, t inverse is linear I have to verify these two equations that t inverse is additive and then t inverse alpha x is alpha t inverse x so proof let us first start with uh, two vectors uh, x y in w this time and consider t inverse of x plus y I must show that uh, this is equal to t inverse x plus t inverse y for one thing let us call this uh, as uh, the vector z 
this vector z belongs to v and I remember that x and y come from w. This means so T is invertible uh, so T inverse is invertible T inverse inverse is T so I am I am uh, operating uh, by T I am operating by T T of T inverse x plus y is T of z but T of T inverse is composition T circle T inverse that is identity transformation so x plus y equals Tz x plus y equals Tz now look at x and y they come from W x and y come from W and uh, I know that T from V to W is bijective so each of these must have a pre image x is equal to T of u and uh, y equals t of v for uh, u v in capital V in fact these must be unique you can verify that if t is bijective then the pre images must also be unique okay in any case we have u and v from v such that x is t u y is t v go back substitute use injectivity of t that is let me now write t z first t z is x plus y x is t u y is t v so this is t of u plus t of v t is linear t of u plus v so I have t z equals t of u plus v t is injective t x equals t y implies x equals y so z equals u plus v u plus v t u is x t v is y so this is t inverse x plus t inverse y but z on the other hand is t inverse x plus y so that is equal to t inverse x plus t inverse y so t inverse is additive the second part is similar let me go through that quickly consider uh, again uh, T inverse of uh, alpha x I will call that z then uh, alpha x is T of z x is in w and so I can write this as alpha T of u I am using the same uh, u alpha T of u equals T of z T is linear so this goes in T of alpha u equals T of z T is injective alpha u equals z on the one hand alpha u is alpha T inverse x on the other hand z is uh, T inverse alpha x so T inverse is linear if uh, it exists if T inverse exists and if T is linear then T inverse is linear no dimensions here this is true for any linear transformation between any two vector spaces okay now let us look at uh, what uh, an invertible linear transformation does on finite dimensional vector spaces so we need the following definition uh, t from v to w is called uh, an isomorphism t from v to w is called an isomorphism if t is uh, linear and bijective if t is linear and bijective isomorphism uh, uh, means the uh, same uh, structure morphism is structure same structure it preserves the structure it is called an isomorphism so that is a special name for a linear transformation which is also bijective what we have seen just now is that uh, if t is an isomorphism then t inverse is also an isomorphism okay note we have just now shown that t inverse is linear t inverse is bijective is known anyway so if t is an isomorphism 
then uh, T inverse is also an isomorphism. What does uh, an isomorphism do to finite dimensional vector spaces? Before that another uh, notion isomorphic vector spaces. If T from V to W is an isomorphism then we say that uh, V is isomorphic to W. there is an isomorphism from V into W then we say that V is isomorphic to W and then uh, use the following notation to denote uh, that there is an isomorphism from V into W we will use this notation on the left I have V on the right I have W this is the symbol for isomorphism V is isomorphic to W. if V is isomorphic to W can I conclude that W is isomorphic to V why T inverse if T is an isomorphism then T inverse is an isomorphism from W to V and so now we can say that V and W are isomorphic it is not just V is isomorphic to W we can in this case say V and W are isomorphic also if V is isomorphic to W W is isomorphic to Z can I conclude V is isomorphic to Z yes because composition of bijective maps is bijective composition of linear maps is linear I have not proved this before but it is not difficult to prove composition of linear maps is linear and inverse of the composition there is a reverse order law similar to the matrix inverse T1 circle T2 inverse is T2 inverse circle T2 T2 inverse circle T1 inverse okay and so um, and uh, what is the trivial isomorphism uh, from a vector space to itself identity identity is linear bijective inverse is linear bijective so V is isomorphic to itself V is isomorphic to W implies W is isomorphic to V V isomorphic to W W isomorphic to Z implies V isomorphic to Z so this is an equivalence relation this partitions the set of all vector spaces into equivalence classes the classes have the property that if you take uh, two vector spaces from two different classes they cannot be isomorphic if you take two vector spaces that are isomorphic they belong to the same class okay what is also what this also does an isomorphism also does is to split finite dimensional vector spaces according to their dimensions that is the important thing isomorphic classes correspond to precisely the dimensions of the vector space that is if two vector spaces are not isomorphic I know they are finite dimensional they cannot be of the same dimension on the other hand if two vector spaces have the same dimension then they belong to the same isomorphic class that is there is an isomorphism between them okay this is what we will prove uh, in, in a short while from now so let me first uh, give an example of an isomorphism and then proceed okay now you will notice that uh, after me writing down the isomorphism that it is really really trivial to have written this down so I want to look at this example uh, let us uh, consider P2 and uh, R3 P2 is V R3 is W P2 is a space of all polynomials uh, with real coefficients degree less than or equal to 2 dimension of P2 is 3 R3 is of dimension 3 I want to give uh, an isomorphism between them let me define T from P2 to R3 by T of a polynomial P I must have on the right hand side a vector with 3 coordinates on the right hand side I must have a vector with 3 coordinates can you give a natural vector on the right just take the coefficients 
what I know is that P is a polynomial. So P of T is uh, alpha naught times 1 plus alpha 1 times T plus alpha 2 times T square. T is a real variable. Alpha naught, alpha 1, alpha 2 are uh, from R again. This is a real polynomial. Define T of P to be this 3 dimensional vector alpha naught, alpha 1, alpha 2. Then uh, probably I am uh, going to leave this as an exercise. T is linear, T is 1, 1, it is enough. Then T is on to because the dimensions are the same. So this is an isomorphism. T inverse is an isomorphism from R3 to P2, but you, maybe you can take that as an exercise again. What is the inverse of this transformation? Okay. Let me just uh, state that T is an isomorphism. What I have exhibited here. This is an example of an isomorphism. T is an isomorphism. Okay, you see that this is almost natural. How to associate uh, an isomorphism between vector spaces of the same dimension? Okay, we'll try to imitate imitate this in the general case. But before that, I want to prove uh, this result. I have T from V into W an isomorphism. T from V to W be an isomorphism. I am assuming that uh, V is finite dimensional that is let U1, U2, etc., UN be a basis of So I am assuming that V is finite dimensional, I have exhibited a basis. Given that T is an isomorphism, what can be shown is that, so what is your uh, guess? From this can I get a basis for W? Look at T U1, T U2, etc., T U N, this is a basis of the vector space W. As a consequence, dimension of V is equal to dimension of W. Okay, this is what I said that uh, if uh, you have an isomorphism between finite dimensional vector spaces, then the vector spaces must have the same dimension. We will prove the converse also. If two vector spaces have the same dimension, then there is an isomorphism, very similar to this particular example. Let me first prove this result. I want to show that uh, this is a basis of W spanning set linear independence. Let uh, Y belong to W. T is an isomorphism, so T is bijective, T is surjective. There exists X in V such that Y is T of X. X is in V, this is a basis of V. I can write this as T of alpha 1 U1 plus alpha 2 U2, etc., plus alpha N U N. T is linear, alpha 1 T U1, etc alpha n t u n. I have written this as a linear combination of t u 1 etc. t u 1, t u 2 etc. t u n is a spanning set. Okay, Nothing much in this, just that uh, t is on to that is what we have used. For linear independence we will prove, we will use injectivity of t, linear independence. Suppose that uh, Suppose that a linear combination of these vectors is 0. Let us take beta 1 T u 1 etc. beta n T u n to be 0. This means uh, T of uh, beta 1 u 1 etc. plus uh, beta n u n equal to 0. This means this vector inside beta 1 u 1 etc. beta n u n belongs in null space of T, but T is injective. 
null space of t is singleton 0 so this must be the 0 vector beta 1 u1 etc plus beta n un is the 0 vector but remember that u1 u2 etc un they form a basis for v so they, these vectors are linearly independent so b1 beta 1 b2 beta 2 etc they must be 0. each of the scalars is equal to 0. So remember I started with beta 1 T u n etc beta n T u n I have shown that each of the scalars is 0 so it follows that T u n etc T u n is linearly independent we have shown already it is a base uh, it is a spanning set so it is a basis it is a basis of W and they are n in number the number of uh, elements in this basis is n so it follows that dimension W is n that is the same as dimension of V. In the next lecture I will prove the converse and also consider other examples.